police are no good? Well, I was born in Dallas, and I was basically the black sheep of the family. Uh, I was known to abuse the laws myself. But, but that gave me an insight to, to watch. So in other words, you're, you're a criminal, and you're not like the good ones in your family, so you've always been antisocial. Yes, I've, I've always been antisocial, but I was a teenager. <laughs> All right, no, at least you're an honest man. That's one thing I like about antisocial people is they're generally more honest. Well, I try. I try. I, I, I had a life change when I was about 24. I'm 44 now. I, I'm, I'm used to being honest. You know? but, but I had an uh, uncle who worked for the Terrell Sheriff's Department, and he told me back when I was young, the only person that actually applies for a job, at least in the, in the country, are people that are too lazy to do any other job except for work for the sheriff, or they have the propensity to be bullies, in which case they want to put the physical abuse on people. Tells me that no, I'm not, not going to look. I can argue with you and say it's not true, and you'll say it is true, and we'll argue around in a cup. So I know your opinion is that of a small number of people in America, maybe a larger number than I'd like to believe. And so, what would you propose that we have no police at all? Would you like anarchy? Well, if, if I may, prior to World War II... Well, no, let's forget World War II. Would you rather we not have any police in America, like the ACLU wants, disarm the police? Would you like to see police with no weapons? No, sir. Matter of fact, I, I think if, if Obama has his way and takes the weapons from the people, it's going to paint a huge target on the backs of the police. The police are both good and bad. The idea oh, so now you're saying something different. So now you're saying they're not all bad. You're saying the police may be not perfect, but they're a necessary evil. Would that be a way to look at it? That's an excellent way to look at it. And yesterday during programming... And, and let me ask you, as a person who was once in trouble with the law or antisocial, however you want to put it, don't you agree that if there were no police, the animals in the street would take people down like sheep? They would just gut them in the streets and take everything from them openly? It, it wasn't that way prior to World War II. The strong took care of themselves. The police and... and uh, yeah, but where, where are the strong today? Tell me, where the, tell me where the strong are today. Tell me where the strong are today in this drug-addicted society of ours. Tell me where are the strong. Who are the strong? The, 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 where, are the strong where are the strong men today? Where are they? Where'd they go? They're hiding behind thick doors and lots of money, sir. So that they don't have to be involved with these. Uh, 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 well, that's an interesting observation. Very interesting observation. And I think you're a very intelligent, articulate individual. And I do thank you for uh, a position that's different than mine. But I think you've made your point, and I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Meanwhile, on the Hillary front, a uh, new report that she intentionally originated and distributed highly classified information. Her game is that it was not classified at the time she did it. Don't you love that? Don't you just love it that although it's classified now, it wasn't classified then? But what was in this information? What about the one she deleted that we can't see? Is there anything there? Who knows? You'll never get to the bottom of it because power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And frankly, they all protect themselves. It's that simple. Manhunt underway after the cop was shot outside Chicago. They still haven't found the guys. The uh, stock market is down 500 points again. Down again. No Democrat debates allowed because it's a one-party communist system where there are no debates. Hillary Clinton would be the perfect leader for North Korea where uh, there are no debates. She's the only candidate and no one needs to know her idea. She's just so perfect. And so that's your Democrat Party, zero debate. One thing about the Republican Party, you can laugh at them all you want, but you have numerous candidates, and they're fighting with each other, which is the sign of a healthy democracy. The Democrat Party is the sign of an unhealthy dictatorship along the lines of Jerry Brown's California, where there is no debate and a one-party system. Hour two coming up, be here or be nowhere. 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is our number two of the Savage Nation on this, what is today, Tuesday? If it's Tuesday, it must be San Francisco. Welcome to the program. Let me go from the war on police being conducted by the federal government and their liberal cohorts. Another cop was shot dead, manhunt, of course, on the way. I want to go to my website, michaelsavage.com, which I learned from Alexa today is, I think, number 500 in the whole world, which is very big, because my radio competitor's website uh, Sean Hannity is something like, I don't know, 16,000 or something. Now, I mean, his show is bigger than mine because he has more stations and all of that. But I mean, a fact is a fact. Why is this little website so popular? Well, it's a picture website, and it's refreshed three or four times a day by myself and the people at WorldNet Daily who are the webmasters. But I want to read you some of the stories and headlines on michaelsavage.com, and then we'll get back to your calls at 855-407-282. Top right. Donald Trump on Savage Show tomorrow, Wednesday, which is a picture of myself and Mr. Trump and, of course, my dog, Teddy. I, I say, of course, because he's always with me wherever he can be. And uh, it's a great picture. Next one says, 59% back Trump on deportation of illegals. Really, that's shocking. Kate Steinle's parents plan to file legal claims against San Francisco and Sheriff Murky Kami and the federal officials who let the illegal alien go free. Good for them. Democrat Congressman echoes Chamberlain, Iran deal will bring peace in our time. Well, let's hope so, I kind of doubt it. Here is a tragically horrendous story. Murder of elderly couple in Sicily fuels Italy's growing anti-immigrant sentiment from the London Telegraph. And take a guess who slit the throats of this elderly couple in Sicily. They were pensioners. They had worked all their lives in Germany in a Mercedes plant. They went home to live out the few years they had left in Sicily. An 18-year-old African migrant from the Ivory Coast, who was in Italy only a short period of time, allegedly slit the throat of Vincenzo Solano, 68, and then attacked his wife, Mercedes Ibanez, 70. Ms. Zabanez fell to her death from a second-floor balcony as she ran away from the robbers. The murderer, or the alleged murderer, the African asylum seeker from the Ivory Coast, Mr. Kamara, is one of thousands of illegal aliens and refugees living at nearby Mineo in southeastern Sicily. They're arriving by boat from Libya. And I'll just rest my case right there. I ran into a young Sicilian young man a few months ago working in a restaurant that my friend owns in San Francisco. And I asked him, why did you leave Sicily? Your family is there, don't you miss? He said, I miss my family and friends very much. He said, but there's no work for me in Sicily. They're giving whatever little work there is to illegal aliens from Africa. I said, who's giving them the jobs? He said, the liberals in, in Sicily. I said, liberals in Sicily? He said, yes. The liberals in Sicily have taken over the government. So what's left? More than 100,000 refugees have arrived by boat in Italy this year. Can you, anyone listening to this show tell me that Europe will survive another 20 years? Can anyone listening to the show tell me that Europe will be a civilized place in 20 years? Can anyone listening to the show tell me there will be new art of the magnitude that Europe is world famous for? Or will Europe descend into chaos and become another third world hellhole? All a result of the liberalism that has plagued and infected the entire Western world. Gianluca Bonanno, with the Northern League, a staunchly anti-immigrant party of the right, says Italians fear for their lives inside their own homes. And he said, this is Renzi's national security strategy. What kind of country are we living in? We can ask the same question about Obama. 
What kind of country are we living in when we have no national security strategy? When he is flooding America with illegal aliens and refusing to take the war to the enemy called ISIS. A relative told La Stampa newspaper the murdered couple had returned from living in Germany to enjoy their retirement in Sicily. They shouldn't have died like this, slaughtered like goats. And there, my friends, is the face of Europe under the EU thugs operating in a bubble. Also on michaelsavage.com on the top left is a picture of myself with a new hat, new suit, new shirt, new smile with my new book, Government Zero, which will not be out until October. I wish we could move it up because it's my, it's my most important and my last nonfiction book. It follows Stop the Coming Civil War. The subtitle says it all, no borders, no language, no culture. But if it was just a repeat of what I had written before, I wouldn't have written it. And I don't want to go into it now because it's too soon, but I would recommend this. If you're a collector of Michael Savage's books and you want to get this last nonfiction book and you want a first printing of it, buy it now on Amazon or one of the other sites where it can be available because if they sell out the first printing, it'll be a second printing. And I think that there's a value to first printing books as a writer. Now, here's an interesting story I stumbled upon this morning. Not the icebreakers, not Obama, not Trump, not Virginia. Oh, Virginia environmentalist follows in Soros and buys into beleaguered fossil fuel. Another phony. Another billionaire environmentalist who made a fortune in, other, in another field is now buying bankrupt St. Louis-based Patriot Coal for $400 million following a major investment in coal by the billionaire liberal activist George Soros. So they ran the price of coal down by running coal out of America, and then they ran in and scooped up the coal companies. But here's the story that really caught my eye. Daily Caller, Kerry Pickett. Emails show Blumenthal pushed Sun's anti-Israel activism on Hillary. This is an amazing story. Anti-Jewish state Jew advising Hillary is my headline. Let me repeat it in case you can't follow the bouncing rhetoric. The State Department's August email dump of former Secretary of Hate Hillary Clinton included numerous communications with close confidant Sid Blumenthal, who often passed along his son Max's anti-Israel articles. Now remember, Blumenthal's Jewish. His crazy liberal son is a Jew. But you got to hear what the crazy liberal Jewish son did. The older Blumenthal, who served in the Clinton White House as a close political liar, uh, aide to the president and first lady, sent Clinton in December 2010 an article that his crazy son wrote about Islamophobia in the Republican Party, the Tea Party, and, quote, the Islamophobic crusade from the pro-Israel lobby. Now, remember, this is a major advisor to Hillary Clinton. I'll go on. Max Blumenthal attacked a number of individuals and groups for their financial or political support of Israel, as well as excoriating them for their criticism of radical Islamic terrorism. In response to a tweet from the Daily Caller's Jamie Weinstein asking the younger Blumenthal if he was an informal advisor to Clinton, Blumenthal said, I wonder about the danger of hashtag JSIL, but she didn't listen. The JSIL hashtag means the Jewish state of Israel in the Levant. This is from a Jew. How many times have I told you liberal Jews are the greatest threat to the survival of, of Israel? How many times that have I told you that liberal Jews are uh, Jews in, in, in inheritance only? They don't believe in God. They believe only in liberalism as their only God. Their only God is Karl Marx. In June of 2010, Mr. Sid Blumenthal sent Hillary Clinton a piece on, that Max wrote about the Gaza-bound flotilla carrying pro-Palestinian thugs which ended in a daily raid, deadly raid by Israeli commandos after the flotilla refused to turn around when it attempted to break through Israel's coastal territory. There was another article that he sent. Max's piece described Israeli teenagers who spent their summer demolishing Palestinian structures in the Bedouin village of al Rakab. Max calls it the summer camp of destruction. By September of 2010, Sid Blumenthal sent Clinton the preface to his son's book, Days of Rage, the Tea Party in America's Right. The older Blumenthal previously sent an email to Clinton a month earlier telling her about his son's new epilogue to the paperback edition of his previous book, Republican Gomorrah, The Right's Day of Rage. Sid sent Clinton a November 2010 email with a piece that his son Max writes that is critical of Dutch lawmaker Gerd Wilders. 
Max describes Wilders as far right, whose agenda is comprised exclusively exclusively of xenophobic populism. Shall I go?